Hey there, it's Inga, and today I want to show you how to create this ultra realistic fir branch using crepe paper. So I'm going to quickly go over the materials that we're going to use, and then we'll get started. So there's two different papers for this project. One is this German doublet crepe paper in dark green. The other is this Italian 180 gram paper in uh, dark brown. The color is called saddle and the number is 568. You're going to want some 18 gauge stem wire. This is pre-coated with a thin layer of green paper. I love the wire that already has a little bit of paper on it. You're going to want some tacky glue. Um, a little tool like a scriber tool could be helpful for sort of getting those needles untangled. I've got some regular scissors and I've also got these uh, spring action scissors by Fiskars. These are really helpful for creating uh, repetitive cuts like I'm going to do with the fringe. And then I've got some wire snips and that's it. So with these simple tools and materials, we're going to make a really cool, realistic fir branch. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing to do to create our ultra realistic fir branch is to make a specialized fringe. And this fringe is going to make those uh, individual fir needles and it's going to give us a space to wrap around the wire. So I have here my green doublet. It's a one inch tall strip or 2.5 centimeters tall. The length isn't super important, but you're gonna want two pieces that are the same length. So I have here, um, you know, this is just the spot in the paper in, in where it folds naturally. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right there on the fold so that I've got two pieces. Now remember that this is two different greens. Uh, for this project, I think either green facing out or, um, you know, mixing the greens together can look really nice. So just consider that if you want a specific green facing out, make sure that you have that one facing the table and then the same one facing up if that's your intention. Or you can mix them up. If I glue it like this, I'm going to have a lighter green and a darker green on the other side, or I can switch it to have the olive green facing out. So whatever you do, just be aware that it's two different greens. I also have a little strip here of my brown crepe. This is half an inch tall or uh, about 12 millimeters tall. And for the length, I'm actually going to stretch this out a little bit. So this has not been stretched yet. I'm going to go ahead and stretch it uh, until it's about double the size. I still want to leave some crepe texture in here because I want to have a little bit of stretch for later. Uh, but this is going to help flatten it out a little bit. It's going to glue a little bit easier and uh, we don't need quite all of that stretch as we're putting this branch together. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece that is around the same width as my green paper. So something like that. I'm going to take my tacky glue and create a couple of lines right along the bottom. Now I want to make sure that the glue really is right near the, the bottom edge because I, I want to have a really secure, um, really secure spot for that brown paper to glue on. I don't want to have any gaps. I don't want it to come unglued. So make sure you've got a nice line of glue there. I'm going to take this paper and set it on here so that it's overlapping about half of the brown paper. So about a quarter of an inch of this brown paper should now be glued onto the green. I'll flip that over. You can see what it looks like on the other side. So I'm just going to press that down a little bit that glued into place. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some glue on top of this brown. So about where that edge of the green would be. And I'm just going to keep going with adding some glue, adding more glue to the brown paper and then going up to 
the top edge here and I want a nice solid line again on the top edge and now I'm just gonna fill in some glue it doesn't have to be perfect on this inner portion of the green but I, I do want to have it spread out pretty well all along all along the strip of green paper I don't want my fringes to come apart I want them to stay nice and glued together so it's okay if there's some gaps but you definitely want to have pretty good coverage here with your glue so something like that would work great so now I'm going to take my other piece of paper here and this is starting to stretch out a little bit with the moisture and the glue so I'm just going to correct the uh, curve of this a little bit and I'm going to place this on top I might need to just stretch it a tiny bit and I want to get that top the top edge of the greens really lined up well it's kind of hard for me to see when it's on camera but I think we're pretty good there and I'm going to go ahead and just get it stuck down. It's okay if you've got some overlap on the edges or if, if these edges don't meet up exactly, that's fine. You can always trim that off. Sometimes you might have a little corner here that dips down a little bit lower or, or you know, this might not be exactly perfectly even. That's okay as well. You just want to make sure that you have at least a, a you know a quarter inch of brown paper sticking down so that you can use that on your stem wrap. So these these pieces are glued together. I'm going to let it dry for a little while, at least for 10 minutes, or you can let it dry all the way. It's it's still going to be easy to cut through either way. So I just want to let it let it dry long enough for that glue to soak into the paper. All right, so it's not quite dry yet, uh, but I am gonna go ahead and just trim off the extra here. So I'm just gonna go, go over to the edge and trim off. So I've got a nice straight edge to start with. I'll do that on both sides. And if there, was, there were any areas of the bottom that I wanted to trim off, I could do that now as well. So I'm still gonna let this one dry for a little bit longer. But I have this one that I made earlier. So this is completely dry and it's, it's still flexible. It's gonna be uh, easy to cut through because you know this isn't multiple layers of paper and glue. It's just two layers of paper with some tacky glue in the middle. Shouldn't be too bad. I'm gonna take these spring action scissors. I love using these for repetitive fringing especially if it's just straight cut fringe. Um, I, I would love these because it, it reduces some of the fatigue in my hand. So if you haven't tried these before, I would recommend them. Uh, I, I do have a link below if you're interested in checking those out. So I'm gonna go ahead with these scissors and start making some tiny fringe. Now the important part here is I wanna go all the way through that green and I want the tip of my scissors to go into that brown paper just a little bit. So this might be a little hard to see, um, but I'll show you again when there's more fringes. I'm actually cutting into the brown paper just a little bit. And the fringes that I'm making are gonna be tiny, uh, about a 16th of an inch or 1.5 millimeters. So that's pretty small. I like to just go slow, take my time, uh, for, for this fringe especially because I want to cut into that brown paper but I don't want to go cut very far. I just want the, the tip of my scissors to cut into that brown paper. If this is challenging for you, if you find yourself accidentally cutting into the brown paper quite a bit, you might consider making a slightly wider piece of brown paper for your stem wrap. That way, if you accidentally start cutting into the brown paper a little bit further, 
it's it's not going to necessarily cause your fringe to fall apart into smaller bits. So here you can see you can see how small these fringe are and you can see that I'm cutting into the brown paper just that tiniest bit just past the green paper. So I'm going to go all the way down my fringe continue until I get to the very end. Sometimes I'll just cut off the fringe at the very end if I know it's going to be too challenging to get those last few little pieces. So yeah, this is this is a slow process for me anyways. So I like to just I like to take my time, relax, maybe listen to a podcast or some music, something like that as I'm working on a project like this. I'm going to go ahead and finish fringing this piece. I'll also fringe this one that I glued together a few minutes ago, and then I'll show you the technique for creating the branch end and start wrapping the fur needle fringe around the stem wire. All right, don't these look pretty? So just a few little things to do before we are ready to use these. So first of all, I'm gonna give the brown paper a little bit of a stretch. This is going to put a little bit of distance in between each of my, uh, each of my little fur, fur needles. I'm also going to give these a very gentle curve. So I'm gonna use the handle or something like uh, a pencil or a paintbrush handle would work great. I'm just gonna curve it very, very slightly. I'm curving it away for me, um, but that'll that's actually gonna be toward the uh, middle of the stem as we wrap it. And I'll, I'll mention that again before, before we start wrapping. So you'll be able to see um, what I mean by that. So I've just put a very gentle curve into these needles. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this one. All right, so before I start wrapping this on my stem, I'm gonna make a little end piece for the stem. So I'm just gonna use some of my brown crepe and make a little end, uh, end for my branch. So I'm gonna cut a piece of brown paper, probably about a quarter of an inch or about six millimeters. We want it to be shorter, more narrow than what we were creating for, for those. So I'm gonna stretch it out all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and get some tacky glue here on the strip. I'm gonna cover uh, pinch it around the end so it kind of covers the end. There we go. And wrap downward just a little bit. So I've wrapped down about an inch or a couple of centimeters. Uh, we're, we're just going to be focusing now on the um, top half inch of the wire or about 12 millimeters of the wire. I'm gonna get my paper going again, and this time I'm just gonna wrap up toward the top, down toward the bottom, turn it, o turn it around again, go up toward the top, and then down toward the bottom. I'm just gonna repeat that until it makes a nice little pointy oval on the end of my stem wire. So this is pretty good. I think that'll work for the end of my branch. And you can go ahead and just kind of roll it in between your thumb and finger to shape it a little bit. I like to have a nice pointy end for these. Um, if you've got any loose edges of paper, it's a good time to just add maybe a little dot of glue and get it, uh, get it nice and glued down. So yeah. This is now ready to go for wrapping with these needles. So I am going to turn this over. I want that curve to be facing up toward me now. I'm gonna go ahead and put a line of glue on the brown paper. Make sure it's just on the brown paper. 
and I'm gonna start right underneath this little end that I made here. I'm gonna get that brown paper glued right underneath that tip, and I'm gonna start wrapping around. So I am gonna do this slowly. It, I find that it, it turns out the best that way. Um, I am wrapping around and slowly inching my way down just a little, a millimeter at a time. <laughs> so every time I go around, I'm, I'm moving it down about a sixteenth of an inch or a millimeter or so. And you'll find that this long strip will only cover a short amount of your stem wire. So that means you'll have a lot of needles and have a uh, really nice, full, realistic looking fir branch. You can experiment with, um, you know, pulling it downward at more of an extreme angle to have fewer needles as you go down, or, you know, if, you, if you're wrapping it slowly like this, you're gonna have a lot of needles um, you know, concentrated in a shorter amount of space. So do what you like to experiment with that. So one of my strips here did wrapped, wrapped a section about uh, two inches long or about five centimeters. So uh, that'll help you figure out how many strips you'll need if you're making a larger branch. So I have this made now, and what I want to do, I have some other branch pieces started. I'm going to show you how to join several pieces together. So I have, I've got this nice long piece. This is going to be my main stem. I've got it started with you know, the same little branch end and a bunch of needles. I have this other little piece here and I've made a, a bend right uh, under where those needles stopped. And that's where I want to attach it onto this stem. So I have this, this amount of wire right here that I need to cover with needles before I add this on. So I'm gonna take another one of my strips here, make sure that curve is up facing toward me, and I'm gonna get it started. So getting glue just on the brown paper, and I'm gonna begin wrapping it kind of where the last piece left off here. and slowly work my way down a little bit at a time. I had about one inch lower than the spot that I started where I wanted to add the next stem. So probably when I wrap about half of this fringe strip is where I want to add the next one. Add the next wire. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here on my wire. And I'm just gonna tuck it in. Hold it there for just a moment. And get my fringe strip wrapped around there and carefully wrap a few times to get it started. Sometimes these needles will kind of get tangled up in each other, so just be aware of that. You might have to go back later. Actually, I will show you how to do that, to go back and sort of detangle them after, after the fact, after they're wrapped. 
So now I'm going around two wires for a little bit here. And remember that not all spots in your branch might look the same, and that's totally fine. This spot, the needles are gonna be a little more spread out. So I can see here where I've got some tangled needles. I'm just gonna go in with this little pointy scriber tool and kind of get them untangled. Here we go. I can even go in and if some of the curl came out or some of that soft bend got removed, I can go in and put that back. So now I've got this little spot here where I've got two coming together. And with this one, I wanted to extend the needles down a little bit more, maybe like that. And then I'll cover this area with some more needles and then join this one right here. And then I would want to ideally extend the needles a little bit further down here as well. And then I would finish this by just wrapping with some plain brown crepe. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this fringe wrapping and probably have to make some more fringe. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm all done. All right, here we go. So I've added the last little bit of my branch and added some more needles down here and then finished the stem with some brown crepe. So this would make a wonderful accent to a winter bouquet or an arrangement, or it could be part of a holiday gift topper or any project that you would like to have sort of an outdoorsy evergreen vibe. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo. And if you try creating your own fur branch, I would love to know how it goes. Leave a comment or you can always tag me on Instagram at Inga Ilza Peterson. If you are interested in more tutorials, I've got a tutorial club on Patreon linked below. Check it out. I've got dozens of full length video tutorials and templates all available for a low monthly pledge. I'm so grateful for the support of my Patreon members. It allows me to keep creating wonderful tutorials like this for you. Have a great day and hope to see you again soon.